was like 15 or 16 or so, I was sitting at home in my parents' house. And I remember hearing some screaming outside, some noise. And before I knew it, somebody had opened my front door and ran into my uh, living room. And I ran after. And I found Axe there, sitting on our couch, trying to catch his breath. We started talking about music and graphics and stuff, and we became friends. And uh, I remember being super impressed with Axe's intro there, just to run into my house, just like that. And he still does that, I mean, not run into people's houses, but he still makes great intros. Axwell's mother owned a house, a place called Blekinge, a few hours drive from where we lived. Him and I decided to drive up there, bringing our computers, and just spend the weekend there. So a typical day would be start a fire in the fireplace, go sit in front of your computer, then we would sit like this the whole day, maybe eat something, and then we would go to sleep. Fairly early though, to be fair. And then we would sleep the whole night. Next morning we would drive into the closest town to use the bathroom at McDonald's. And then we would drive back and it would be the same thing all over again. To this day, I haven't met anyone else who would want to drive for three hours straight to a place surrounded by beautiful nature to sit inside for three days straight on the computer. Uh, the first record he made was obviously a white label. And I remember that he thought they looked super boring. And he asked me if I could draw something on them by hand. Smiling face or a monster. I remember I drew a skull with big teeth sticking out. One eye pointing that way. The other eye was just a hole, I think. But I remember that he liked it a lot and that's how it all started. When, when Axe called me and told me that him and his friend James Sefton were starting a label, that was actually right around the time when, um, when Viola was born. Uh, she's 10 now and obviously uh, Axe Tone is celebrating 10 years. Then Jenny said that, hey, how about we move, we buy our own house and we try to um, make a living, take photos and doing what we love doing. And um, she found this house we've been able to uh, turn this place into a home. And just last year, we, um, we actually started building the studio that's just, that was just completed uh, a month ago. I do house-related graphics, and she takes photos. She is kind of the mastermind behind our move to this area. I grew up in the city of Lund in the early 80s. For some reason our area was chosen to be a testing area for cable TV. Before that we had practically no channels at all. We had two sw Swedish TV channels and one Danish one. But now all of a sudden we had like 20 or 30 different channels from all over the world. I remember watching He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, Mask, G.I. Joe, a lot of American wrestling. Before then, if we were lucky, we, we could catch an hour's worth of, of cartoons a week. But all of a sudden, we could watch cartoons every day and every night if we wanted to, which was fantastic, a real game changer. I had been helping Axe out with um, artwork and logos and stuff like that since even before he had a career. So when Axe and his friend and manager at the time, James Sefton, um, decided that they wanted to start their own label, Axe gave me a call and asked me to help them design their logo and come up with a nice looking sleeve design. When we started out, I think it was important to yeah, both me and Axe and James that we really got the logo out there. So it was a no-brainer for us to just stick the logo as big as possible on the cover of the first few releases. I came up with the idea of, of making symbols for each track. So I would try and design a crest based on the title of the track. But after that, I think both me and Axe realized that it would be kind of hard to translate every song title into a symbol. Axwell asked me to try and come up with something for his new track called Leave the World Behind that he was making with Sebastian Ingrosso and Steve Angelo and laid back Luke. 
So I um, put together something um, with clouds and I sent that to Axe and well, he, I, 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 I think he kind of liked it, but he said that, hey, how about we try and leave the world even further behind? How about we try and move this whole thing out to space? And I liked that idea, so um, I ended up making a huge, like a galaxy image of stars and galaxies. And I sent the whole thing off to my trusty sidekick, Frederick. He just added the legendary typography. We sent it off to Axe and he loved it. And then after that release, Axe and I kind of decided that we would try and stay on that track, try to keep all the releases a bit sci-fi. And suddenly, I found use for all of the crazy ideas I had gotten watching too much cable as a kid. For anyone who's ever tried using Google's image search to find a decent photo of a moon for your sci-fi Axtone inspired artwork. Know that you always end up with the same few pictures that you like. I'm going to show you a good trick. Now, I, I love living out here. I'd rather just wake up, go sit by the computer, just kind of make use out of those first few hours and then take the rest of the day off maybe. No, but seriously, I've never been good at working late or working overtime for that matter. I'm just, I mean, the first few hours of the day, those are my best working hours. I think I'm like 400% better those hours than the rest of the day. And that's kind of sad, I realize that, but that's just how it is. And um, that's why I decided to call my company Breakfast Design, actually. It's because whenever I make something good, it's always like in the morning. When I make artwork for Axtone, I always set out to create a combination between these couple of um, artworks. ABBA, The Arrival, 10cc, Deceptive Bends, Crisis by Mike Oldfield, and then I tried to add Julian Tharp, The Jet Age. If you mix all these, you will get the perfect artwork. And you're pretty restless before you decide on what idea you're doing, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm in a pretty bad mood, I think. Yeah, to be he's honest. pretty, yeah, he's in a bad mood. It's before I've come up with something to send off as the first rough sketch. It's kind of, because it's always a tight, you know, time schedule. And the longer I take, it long, the longer it takes me to come up with an idea, I mean, the... the then you, the shorter amount of time you have to complete it. So Simon, he will probably tell me that, okay, so we have, we have this new track coming up. As soon as I find out the title of a new track, step one for me is always to draw a series of miniature sketches, just like something like this. It's just an, an easy and quick way to brainstorm and to instantly see which of your ideas work and which don't. If your idea works in this small size, it will look fantastic big. And uh, whatever I end up with, I bring over to the computer to continue in Illustrator or Photoshop. And then when I have decided on um, uh, what to go with or what to try, I will go to Google and try to Google for some re reference uh, images just to be able to make uh, a decent sketch that I can send to Axe so that Axe can approve the whole idea. He usually gets back to me within an hour or two and he will say, yeah, and then sometimes you come up with an idea that Ax or Ax Axum yeah. doesn't like, yeah. and it's like I remember you 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 did one. There, there was like this big white wolf walking alone in a like deserted city, <laughs> and we were like, oh, this is so good. This is the perfect picture. If they don't like it, it they they suck. And then a few moments later, I'm like, so, how did it go? And he was like, Axel didn't like it. He's, oh. Why? Why? Why didn't he like it? I can't even remember. It was too weird or he something. Said, he said he wasn't a dog person. Oh, that's what he said. <laughs> and so I said, can't you try to convince him? Nope. No. 
After that step, I, I basically try to make the original artwork. I like the one with the, the, the black, the big bell, the, the clock. Yeah, the, the clock big... tower. Yeah. yeah that's like one of my that, favorites how too. how to stop the time. Yep, that's it. I like that one too. I, I think it's amazing, and, and you, it's... You, you you are you, you are in that image twice. Yeah, I. You play one both. Boy, uh, one boy and one yeah. Boy. Most of the accent on court um, have at least one person in them, and if it's a kid, I usually ask either Frank or Viola if they're willing to pose for, if nothing else, for the for the mock up. And sometimes I ask Jenny to pose, if, even if the end result will have a, an alien or whatever. We posed for I Found You, which was pretty memorable. Yeah. It's kind of like a new version of Tron. At the time, Tron wasn't that big and this was no, before... No, it was before the remake. It was yeah. Yeah, before the remake and before I mean, Daft Punk did this whole Tron thing. So, so we put on bicycle helmets knee pads. Underwear. <laughs> Underwear. The story isn't as funny as the actual picture, but I don't think I can... No, we won't show that. Absolutely no. not. No. So I read the title, I listen to the track, and then I try to do the whole thing the other way around. So instead of thinking, okay, so the name of the track is Solar, I guess I should have a sun in there. Instead I try to do it the other way around. If the track name is Solar, then I should try and avoid having a sun in there. How could I then make something that still works with the track and makes sense? So when you listen to the song, it feels like the artwork fits the track perfectly. But still, if I'm doing my job right, the artwork will surprise you.